Let's continue writing our own implementation of a list. Remember that I called it me list. We're mimicking the built-in list that came with C Sharp 2.0 back in the day when they finally decided to release generics. Thank goodness. List is the data structure that is most like an array. In fact, the one main advantage to having a list is we can treat it like an array and that we can index into it. I'll say console right line my party ages sub one. The index of the elements we've added to the list is zero, one, two. So when I say console right line my party ages sub one, the oneth index is the 34. Build that, run that, and you can see we have a 34. If I turn this into a me list, which is our implementation of a list that we're writing up here, I'll come over here and say me list. You'll see that this line no longer builds. It's saying, hey, uh, I cannot index with a me list. And that is because we have not provided what C Sharp calls an indexer. Writing an indexer is pretty straightforward. It's a lot like operator overloading. If you want to go check out the operating overloading videos, you may. But the syntax is just a special little syntax for C Sharp. We say public T because we're going to return a T. T is the type that we are returning. This brackets int index brackets curly curly say get here and all we need to do now is return our underlying array which is items item sub index you'll notice that an indexer looks a lot like a property and that we have a get here we don't have any parentheses hanging out here but we do have brackets and we also have the keyword this because we are indexing on this object let me demonstrate down here when i say my party ages bracket one my party ages is the this and then the one is the parameter that is passed in as the index and now we can return item sub index control f5 and you see that we get 34 again 34 there's some issues with the way we've written this indexer however i can say give me item number four and recall that this is zero one, two, there's not a three, there's not a four, however, this works just fine, it prints zero. Why? Because the default size of our underlying array is five. But out here, all we know is that we've added three items. This should throw an index out of bounds exception. So let's do a little check here and say, if index is greater than or equal to the actual count of items that we're keeping track inside of our list throw a new index out of range exception saying so bad so sad sorry you went too far we can actually trace through this let me put a breakpoint here and i'll hit f10 let's create our party ages me list f10 on this you can see our index is four we passed a four here so then we get down to the throw with indexers, we're not limited to just having an int. I can say whatever I want to say. I can say string, blah, char, c, but now we'll get a squiggly down here saying, hey, if you're going to index into this thing, you need to pass me more stuff. So we can say Jamie, and we could have the letter G, and now it builds just fine. It runs, well, it kind of runs just fine. We're still indexing 4 here. Let's put this back to a 1. We'll get element 34 element 34 let me actually f10 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 you can see that index is one because we passed a one right here blah will be jamie and c will be g obviously this we're not using these arguments but maybe we want to come up with something really tricky with a list so we need more arguments here i don't think it makes sense let's take that off i was just doing that for demonstration purposes however when we look at dictionaries and how dictionaries are implemented you'll see that we can pass any type t in here but we'll save that for a later video. Also notice that this indexer looks a lot like a function. We're just using square brackets because we think of indexing as using square brackets. But if you can get used to the fact that the square brackets are actually our parentheses, then it almost, well, it seems like this value we're passing in here is the argument to our function. Let me put go back to square brackets. But essentially, these are the arguments to our indexer that looks a lot like a property and we can pass any number of arguments we want here as long as we have the same parameters up here and another problem we have with our indexer however is we can't assign to it i can't say my party ages sub 2 gets 66 that won't build i'll get the red squiggly saying hey it's only readable it's not writable all we have is a getter solving that is actually pretty straightforward in fact i encourage you to pause the video and solve it before i do but here we go same check here if index is greater than count 
Same day. Did you see how I just copied and pasted there? I should, probably should put this in some function that I call instead of copying and pasting. But anyway, if index is greater than count, check an exception at them. We should add something in here. Or if index is less than zero, then we're out of range as well. Here's another reason why we don't like to copy and paste. Because if I fix it here, I have to fix it here. I should make a helper function. In fact, why not? Let me just highlight this. Shift F10. Refactor. Extract method. Check boundaries is what we'll call it. Check boundaries, hit enter. Thank you Visual Studio for generating this function for us. Now I don't have to worry about copying and pasting these checks in both places. I'll get rid of the private because I know the default is private and I'm a big boy, I can remember that one. And then right here I'll just say check boundaries on index. Oh, same thing here, check boundaries on index. Notice the index argument is good for both the getter and the setter as long as we're within boundaries. Let's say items sub index gets value. Notice value turns blue. Just like a property inside of any property in a setter, you get this implicit value argument. And now going down here, we can say my party ages sub 2 gets 66. And if I print my party ages sub 2 instead of being 32, we'll get a 66. And that's good. We're golden. We're looking more like the built-in list the further we're getting along here. Just for tickles, let me show you the underlying MSIL code that the C-sharp compiler generates. Remember that we write C-sharp. We send it through the C-sharp compiler. That generates MSIL code. M-S-I-L code. Dot .NET specific code. And then the jitter, the J-I-T, at runtime generates that uh, native, sorry I'm off the bottom of the screen here, but that generates native code. I've shown this in several videos. Let's actually look at the generated MSIL, the comp C Sharp compiler generated MSIL. Bring up the Visual Studio command prompt. Go back all the way to C colon backslash where I saved main class. CSC main class dot CS reflector dot main class dot exe I don't know why I put a dot between reflector and main class dot exe that opens the dot net reflector let's poke around in this assembly a little bit look at main you see all of our code is here you can see that the compiler replaced the stuff in curlies with the add we've talked about that before let's go to me list you can see the stuff generated from yield there you can also see the indexer here if I click there's our original code. Let's look at the IL level, though, the actual IL level. An indexer, like a property, is just a set of metadata. Go watch my reflection videos, reflections and metadata, if you want to learn more about that. There's no code here. This is simply saying, hey, we have a property. It's called item. By convention, all the .NET compilers know that a property called item is an indexer that's used for indexing, the brackets thing. Notice that these properties take an argument. Unlike other properties, we, we generally just pass the value that we're setting to set, but we don't take any additional arguments. The indexer takes additional arguments. In this case, it's the int32. That is the int that we're indexing with. Other than that, this is just a property, and it says, hey, if they want to get, then call me list get item. If they want to set, call me list set item. This is not code. This is purely metadata. Again, I stress, go watch my reflection videos if you want to learn more about that. But we can look at the actual code for get item. If I click there, here's the actual IL. That essentially checks the boundaries, loads up items, and returns that index that we pass in. So don't let indexers throw you off too much. They're just properties that take arguments. No big deal.